today on Rambling About Cars. We got a whole lot of Lexus going on, and soon we're going to have a whole lot of Land Cruiser going on because apparently that's coming back to the States. I don't know. That's what we're hearing. And we're going to talk. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some legit fun today. We're going to talk about a scale model engine that is just amazing in every respect, a fully functional V8. And then that's going to lead us to talk more about just scale cars and the whole scale car hobby in general. Let's roll, everybody. It's podcast time. I am Christopher Smith, and Mr. Chris Boos is across the way. It's been a very busy Wednesday. I'm super excited to just be hanging out with you here tonight. Yeah. what You doing any car stuff as of late while we, you know, wait for people to trickle in? Ah, uh, that there was a car show. I think a couple of weeks ago I wanted to go to. Didn't have time. Um, there was a car. Sh- there was actually a Mustang show coming up um, at Mackinac City, which is right on the Straits of Mackinac between the Upper Lower Peninsula, of Michigan. Mm-hmm. What one of the prettiest areas in the world? Uh, for all the Ramblers out there listening, if you're in the United States and you managed to make it to vacation uh, to Mich- Michigan for a vacation. It's it's I hate to say it's an unknown area because it's kind of known, but people don't realize just how amazing it is. Anyways, long story short. And it's funny you bring up Mackinac Island because there are no cars on the island. So there, there are no vehicle. There are there are no motorized. Only the fire department has the, the fire cars. department, I believe, has a fire truck, but there are no motorized machinery at all allowed on yeah. the island. Uh, this is Mackinac City, though, on the, right. the, the lower peninsula right there at the Straits. There is a Mustang specific car show going on that I would very much like to attend, but that happens to coincide with my big class reunion this year that I'm finally going to go to one for the first time. So, and there's still a show sitting in the garage that's still (laughs) under the covers. I've pushed it around a couple of times. I have it on the little dollies so I can just push it around when I need. So I've pushed it like 10 feet in either direction. (laughs) So you move it over, about, get whatever you need to get, and then you move it back over. And, and then I shove, I, so I shove it back out of the way, right? Ten feet well, at a time. Yeah. Well, Bobby, I mean, what about you though? You, I mean, you've you've got your bike, you've got your mini. Are, are you back? Are, are you back so, into those yet? Here, I so unf- for anyone who out there, my house flooded on Christmas Eve is when it technically happened. Although I didn't find out about it until the day after Christmas. So my dad took uh, the motorcycle just because we've had construction workers in and out all the time so just to keep it safe so i've not gotten to ride that the navi um but the mini is there and so i drive that whenever i can nice well at least you're getting some driving i mean i i guess i i took the mustang out for a little drive um usually once a week i get to go out for a little drive so that's good i I really want to get i really want to get working on the the taurus I, Mm -hmm. one of the reasons I got it was, hey, let's bring it back to life. Let's see what it's like to work on one of these cars when I don't have to drive the next day. Right. And because I mean, I had these when I was younger, uh, just, well, I had a dozen of them. It's an addiction. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's an addiction. I even got a little tiny engine that I'm going to show later. Look at that. Very cool. Um, so I'm excited to work on it. I just don't have time, but you you don't want to hear about a, a, 27 year old ford taurus do you ramblers come on you don't sometimes they do but sometimes i think we should get to the news we should get to some news thanks everybody for joining um motor one com on facebook motor one com twitter motor one youtube channel you can interact with us live type whatever you want to type in the chat make it fairly pg friendly and car related i mean we don't want to we don't want to talk about like ufos or anything. well maybe we do but we can't because we got to talk cars Lexus specifically this G- car. Lexus GX 2024 Lexus GX debuted. It's new. It has some and, ties to something we're going to talk about a little bit later, but yes. um you need to go to Motor One everybody or if you're on YouTube, uh, we have a link right there on the Watch. YouTube uh, channel. Um cuz Chris Bruce wrote an amazing debut article for the Lexus GX and he's going to tell us all about it. I am. Uh, so it, it's good that you mentioned that it's new because that's kind of a big deal. The previous Gen GX debuted for the 2010 model year. Mm-hmm. So 14 model years on sale before a replacement is, I mean, that's forever in cars <laughs> these days. Like, <laughs> it I, really it's is. hard to think of an older one than that. There are some out there, but Nissan GTR. 
uh was that oh nine yeah you're right so gtr like some of the vans and stuff are, that are yeah. out there are pretty old but they're not, not a lot um so the fact that it's all new brand new everything is different uh is a pretty big deal um one thing and you alluded to this a moment ago so we'll go ahead and bring it up it rides on toyota's uh gaf platform which is body on frame and that's also underneath the new lexus lx and it's also underneath i believe the tacoma as well mm -hmm. but yeah so it uh all new body on body on frame platform that it shares with other Toyota and Lexus products uh, that gives a double wishbone suspension up front, multi-link setup in the rear uh, and an uh, adaptive suspension. Adaptive dampers will be optional um, power at launch. And so this is interesting. And I tried to yeah. I talk to Toyota and you can see the, the quote in the story. They are saying a hybrid version will come later. We don't know how much later. They, they said we're not commenting on the time frame, but the fact that they put it in the announcement that a, a hybrid is coming suggests it can't be too far in the future. Right. You know? um, but at launch, uh, all of them are the GX550, and that is a 3.4 liter V6 with two turbos, making 349 horsepower, 479 pound-feet of torque, and uh, it can tow up to 8,000 pounds depending on what trim level you get. And what I find really interesting there is if you want the up spec engine, nah, no, there is no, th this is it. That's the only, right, that's what I mean, at launch. Yeah, that's is the it. only thing. I mean, not even like that engine in a different tune. That's it. Um, and I guess I find that maybe, maybe I've gotten used to just having various options and, and various I mean, powertrains at launch. They said the SUV. hybrid's coming. That There right. is going to be another option. It's just not going to be available at launch. Right. So. Well, I mean, when we compare this to the other Lexus that debuted at this, well, it debuted three minutes later, let's be honest. Right. Uh, yes. I mean, we'll get to that later, but I mean, there's, there are some powertrain options there. It's just, I just found that a very interesting and it, it just kind of, it, it made me wonder is Lexus pretty confident in their in their GX here? I mean, I, I kind of I mean, we only have numbers on a page, but it, right. it kind of seems like they should be pretty proud of it. It looks I love the super boxy, angular, chiseled look of this thing. I yeah. think it's fantastic. It is a complete departure for Lexus. I can't. It is. What I mean, I've never seen a Lexus that looks like this before, but I love it. Um and it's funny because, like you said, we'll be talking about the TX in just a second, but it debuted a few minutes later, and lo it looks much more like a traditional Lexus. It looks like it should. This just looks mean, and like it looks very off-roady. And uh, well, and and part of that is the um, the Overtrail edition. Yep. That uh, that's again. Do you want your luxury Lexus? kind of buffed up and rugged. I mean, if you need any any more clues right now as to the trends at automakers of making their quote unquote soft rotor SUVs more rugged, not that not that something Land Cruiser base is ever really a soft rotor, but you you aren't thinking of Lexus and rugged in the same sentence. And here sure. they have their Overtrail off-road edition that I mean, you're right, Bruce. It's it's kind of tough looking, man. Oh, no, totally. I mean, so when you're looking at these pictures, the one that's kind of the champagne color, I just realized I forgot to start the slideshow. Sorry, folks. Um, the champagne colored one is the Overtrail Plus. So there's going to be the Overtrail, Overtrail Plus. Unfortunately, Toyota didn't really want to get into a lot of what the Overtrail Plus has. Um, mm -hmm. The only mention in the announcement is that it has massaging seats. So... But it's building on the regular overtrail. <laughs> and with that, you get um, so all uh, GXs have a locking center differential. With the overtrail, it also has a locking rear differential. You get all sorts of off road. Uh, so you also get, eight, I should say, 18 inch wheels with 33 inch tires, mm -hmm. um, downhill assist control, crawl control, what they call electronic kinetic dynamic suspension system that adds uh, additional wheel articulation, just, you know, all sorts of stuff you would use if you were going to go off road. And, and I mean, as, as we're getting here in the comments, um, Eric, thanks for joining us again. It's not just looks, it's got the goods. I mean, the, yeah. it, there, there are land, there's land cruiser DNA in there. 
Um, and it's it, it sounds like it can back up the looks. Um, and Bruce, I just want to back up for a moment because you were talking about massaging seat option. And it's just like, yeah, that's the first thing I'm thinking of with my rugged off rotors and massaging seats. Welcome. But then, I mean, you know, that's for I mean, the pl- overtrail plus. So they got to put a plus on it somehow. And the only thing they mentioned <laughs> is massaging seats. I, so. I, I mean, welcome to to getting off grid Lexus style, right? Right. Your butt can be massaged while you go over rocks. Which, I mean, depending on the speed can. Well, I, yeah, we'll we'll that'll be for a different podcast at a different time. But yeah, man, I mean. This is kind of a this is kind of a shocker for me when when I first saw this at a glance I wouldn't say Lexus sure Unle- unless totally. unless obviously you see the badge um and and we don't have any pricing information on this yet no pricing but, so it's going to go on sale early 2024 mm-hmm. so uh no but so no pricing yet though okay um, and and I should, and, you, know, you keep bringing it up uh, land cruiser i should say that the gaf platform is also underneath the new land cruiser that we don't get here so mm-hmm. it it is you know they use that platform on basically anything that's toyota or lexus and body on frame they use that gaf platform on right um now we don't know pricing do we have any sort of estimate i mean i mean, um, did, I, mean we, I mean do we know we so in the story we tried to kind of run some numbers to get an idea. So currently a 2023 uh, Lexus GX starts at $59,775 with uh with the destination fee. Mm-hmm. We looked at what happened with the LX and the price technically went down for between when it uh the previous generation and the new generation but it went down because the final model year they only had a special edition model that had like every bell and whistle possible so they loaded it up and then they came out with the new one and the price was actually a bit less Mm -hmm. so with that in mind i think my guess is it's going to be right around that sixty thousand mark maybe it'll you know go up a little bit maybe it'll be 63 but low 60s is kind of where i would ballpark it okay and uh, i mean there's certainly all kinds of competition in the suv world in general and sure. in in the luxury side i mean i mean it's just growing every day um let me let me make a, a suggestion here instead of jumping Please. right over to the uh to the other lexus debut do we want to talk about the land cruiser news because yeah, it kind we of do land cruiser I, news because i think it kind of fits here um, it does, and, and I know, and and some of our some of our ramblers that are listening, we're seeing all the comments over here. We appreciate everybody commenting, uh, kind of talking a little bit about it. Um, the news is Land Cruiser is coming back to the United States. Yep. The question is, is it going to be the Land Cruiser offered overseas, or is it going to be like the Land Cruiser Prado? I think. Uh, or, well, or so we slight, kinda... slightly different version. I don't know if you saw this story from today, but we kind of oh, got it. I didn't a catch it from today. That. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lay let it me on me. Share this. So I, I was say heads down most of the day four. today trying to just keep up with news. So uh, educate 2024 me. 2024 Land Cruiser teased for Europe, likely next gen Prado. So uh, Lex, or I'm sorry, Toyota has started the teaser campaign for the, and we, we should explain the Land Cruiser Prado is essentially the next step down from the full on land cruiser. It's a little bit smaller, you know, it's, I, I kind of think of it as a uh, Range Rover, Range Rover sport kind of sort of, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, let me pop this up here. So uh, it will debut for Europe soon. And we're thinking, and our, you know, our writer and our boss here, Adrian, he also is thinking this is probably the vehicle that we're going to be getting in the U S right. We so don't no, know, but it would make sense, especially since that's I mean, it kind of lines up here with the GX then. And and I mean, is the timing not really uh, quite coincidental that, OK, we have the new Lexus GX that debuts and then just I mean, just a few days later. Hey, by the way, United States, we're going to have another Land Cruiser coming back. And then we have the news today. So, yeah, the right. <laughs> Are are we are we looking at Lexus GX and a new U.S. Land Cruiser that are just going to compete head to head like that? 
Well, I I think they would. It would be a case of where you would have. It's a, exactly the case of the next vehicle we're going to talk about with the TX, mm -hmm. where it's a Toyota Grand Highlander, but a Lexus version of it. So you know, it's a little bit nicer. It looks a little bit different. You know, automakers have been doing that for years and years and years of having basically two products that are very similar mechanically, but you know, there's the luxury version with it from a different mark that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you get a, a little bit more luxury or, you know, tech or mm -hmm. something like that with it. So I don't think that, you know, it, they're necessarily going to steal sales from, uh, from Lexus, but well, let me, and, uh, oh, go yeah, ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, just kind of piggybacking there. Uh, I mean, Toyota's announcements, I, I, I found it pretty interesting because it was a five second clip, just a short clip that they published on social. Um, yeah. and the, and the message was just like, Kind of in your face. Did you really think we'd be gone for long? The legend returns. And it's, and this, I remember when it was announced, okay, the Land Cruiser isn't coming to the United States and the, the, the current generation, I should say. Right. And, and it felt like pretty much a done deal. I mean, am I not remembering that correctly? Because it felt to me like pretty much a done deal. And then, okay, well, you're going to have the, the, the LX, the Lexus LX 600. Which, if if you want the Land Cruiser, you'll get the the LX six hundred because I mean the last Land Cruiser in the United States was I think it started at well, well like eighty thousand thereabouts. Yeah, there. So I mean, it, so I mean, <laughs> Land Cruiser or Lexus. I mean, you're you're paying. I mean, it, it, they're premium SUVs either way you cut it, right? Right. I, 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 but if this is actually you know the Land Cruiser Prado. Then it, that makes more sense, you know. It that does. you could, I think, you could have that differentiation to, to me it, at least. It does. It does. Um, and yeah, it's it's all interesting news that kind of came about at a very convenient time, which tells me, I mean, we know that automakers don't just make snap decisions, right. but yeah. but I'm I'm feeling I'm bringing this up because I'm what's what's the word I'm looking for. I'm feeling maybe just just maybe a little bit of whiplash where it's like, well, okay, apparently Toyota was planning this for a very, very long time. And they sure made it seem like, hey, Land Cruiser's done in the States, man. That's that, that that's it. I mean, hey, maybe that's a good message to put out there. Maybe that means someone who's like on the fence and the you know, the final, what would it have been, 2022 or 2021 Land Cruiser was at a dealer and that was enough for him to snap it up. And now a few years later, oh well. You, you twisted our arms. We're bringing the Land Cruiser back, you know? I mean, or or we can go by what Eric here is saying in our comments, this or a Bronco similarly priced. Did you ever think we would be talking about uh, well, like a Lexus not... GX, a, a Lexus or a Bronco? I agree with Group FBC, though. They're vastly... Di so GX is a three row, which yep. obviously the Bronco is a two row. And at 60 grand, you're basically at, if we're assuming that the new GX costs 60 grand, you're at basically... You're pretty high up in the Bronco. You're kind of you're range. you're up there in the Bronco range. You you're I think you're just about there with the Bronco Raptor if you want to get uh, if you really want to get jiggy with it. <laughs> you're yes, you're right. <laughs> I just haven't heard anyone that would say get jiggy with it in here. Yeah, well, I I told you my class reunions coming up, and I've been putting oh, together a, a, a Spotify playlist of kind of period correct music. So gotcha. So yeah, I, I had some big release style going on there for a little bit, but, um, but yeah, it, it mm -hmm. you know, assuming that this is the Land Cruiser Prado and it is basically the Toyota version of the new GX, that seems kind of you know it's going to cost less. It, it just it's going to have to, um, but it sounds like you you know you'd still probably because they are sharing so much stuff, you would still be able to get all the off road goodies, mm -hmm. and you know. Maybe this you know, fills the role that the FJ Cruiser uh, abandoned. Mm -hmm. And and just just to confirm, um, Eric is mentioning I didn't see a third row. The the GX is available with an optional third row. Is that is that correct? It's only you. Can, there are two versions. You can either get six seats with uh, captain's chairs in the back in the second row, sorry, mm -hmm. or seven seats with a bench and then a third row. I'm looking through. Okay, it was it was just the way the photos were coming up there, I guess they did they not release so there's the second I, I, row that was one thing i was surprised of too and this is a little inside baseball but um 
I mean, we had our debut post uh, set up ahead of time. Um, we had our live stream, and this happened last Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So it was, it was a little bit of a late night for us, and I was shepherding that along. And usually when it comes to embargoes like this, automakers will send out a few photos so so news outlets can have something pumped up ready to go. Um, or, well, well, we'll have something pumped up ready to go. And then once the embargo lifts, the debut happens, they inevitably post a bunch more photos on their site. So I went to Lexus and there were like eight, I think <laughs> like, like, like eight or nine. And it's just like, I mean, for something as big a deal as this is. And I mean, this is a big deal uh, for Lexus to have these vehicles in these segments. I was kind of surprised. We just didn't see that many photos. So I, you know what? Um, just so we're all, we're all clear. I will just go up. Um, uh, group FBC. That's uh, we're still talking GX. We'll be talking TX in just a moment. But mm -hmm. Eric Nefron, I want to. I'll read directly from the press release for you, so everything can be clear. The second row is available in two configurations: captain's chairs or a 60/40 split bench. A one-motion tumble system has been added for convenient access to the third row slash luggage space. Heated and ventilated seats are standard for the driver and front passenger, with available heated second row seats. The third row is available in both power and manual seat configurations a rear seat uh, a rear seat reminder has been implemented for increased safety and convenience so three and rows. yeah i mean i mean i'm, I'm just kind of burning through the uh, the official lexus media photos and I, I mean eric's spot on if i hadn't had the press release i mean i i'm only i'm only seeing two rows here so yeah i um, i, I it, yep. it's not <laughs> I, I, they should have released those images, but they didn't. It, so, yeah. and, and I'm kind of surprised they didn't, but I mean, it does, I mean, it does better show just how much space you have in the back, but yes, mm -hmm. uh, GX is third row available and you know what? So it is the TX. Yep. Do we yeah. want to go ahead and talk about the TX here? I do to talk about it for just a second while I get the slideshow. I can, up I can talk it. about the TX a little bit. If you are familiar with the Toyota Grand Highlander, you might be familiar with the Lexus TX, but it's not just a straight badge job. Um, oh, no. Among, the uh, styling uh, is quite different. The, the, the styling is quite different. Uh, you have different powertrain options. Um, and the TX, you you while there are three powertrain options for the TX, you start with the 2.4 turbo. Um, in the TX350, that's 275 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque. You can get that in all-wheel drive or just front-wheel drive. There's the TX500H. Uh, that's the 2.4-liter hybrid with 366 horsepower, 409 pound-feet. Or you can get the 550H+. Plus. Presumably, the plus is going to get your massaging seats, right? That has a 3.5 V6 hybrid with 406 horsepower. And it's a plug-in hybrid, 33 miles of range. So, and and those are different from the uh, from the Grand Highlander. Obviously, the styling is we very. Need, different. We need to call out Grufa FBC here, calling it the Lexus Texas because. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. The Lexus Texas. Um, don't call that a spindle grill in front, by the way, everybody. Um, Lexus calls it the unified grill. Um, there are still, there, there are still spindle shades in there, but I mean, it's, there, it's like a it's, vestigial it's, spindle. Like if you squint, you can see it, but it, they're slowly getting away from it. Um, they have, I mean, they have the larger opening at the top with a clear division right underneath that with the very large vents at the bottom. So, I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's reasonably attractive. I mean, inside, I mean, it's all decked out inside 12.3 inch, uh, center screen. Let me switch my screen just so I can take another look here. Well, here, I'll share my thoughts while you're doing that. Okay. Um, it, it's hilarious to me that, and folks, this is true. This debuted three minutes after the GX, and <laughs> they're such wildly different vehicles that kind of do the same thing. They're both three-row yep. luxury SUVs, but this is kind of the one that, you know, you cruise around the suburbs in. It's, you know, it's... I in the top trim, it's actually more powerful, but I still, you know, but this is not an off roader. You probably yeah, you could it's take it lightly off roading, right? But yeah, it's it's more of the street Lexus, and I think it was kind of smart to actually set it up. They set up separate live streams: one at eight, one at eight oh three. I mean, I mean, 
for all intents and purposes, they debuted at the same time. Sure. But they were completely different debuts. And I mean, when you look at them, obviously they're very different looking. Um, uh, there are four trims that will be offered here. You are going to have standard premium luxury and F sport performance. Bruce, I love that you were talking about the 18 inch available wheels on the, uh, on the GX. There are yeah. 20 inch wheels on this, which tells you, yeah, you're that's, you're not going off road with 20 inch wheels and, and rubber band spec tires. And you can even get 22 inch optional wheels. Um, that's definitely a more of a street machine. Um, what else we got here? It, it is a three row machine. So you get second girl captain's chairs, 60, 40 split are available. Um, it's riding on the GAK platform, which as you know, also underneath the Toyota grand Highlander, um, this one, just like the Lexus GX, we don't have any pricing information available yet. We have speculated that it could start around the low to mid 60 range. Um, Wait, which... start? No, no. Oh, you you have low 50 range in your story. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> low to mid 50 range. I got to clean my glasses here, folks. Give me just a minute. Thanks for making that catch. The, to mid because at that price, it would be the same as what we think the GX would be. And it would be so weird to sell two vehicles that are three row SUVs at basically the it, same price. It, it, it Well, I mean, they're still close. I mean, that's true. I mean, grand, if, you're, yeah. if you're in the low to mid 50 range for this and we're looking at low to mid 60s, possibly again, the, 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 these are just estimates that we've come up right, with. We are based, based on now based on similar uh, Lexus vehicles, based on outgoing vehicles uh, and so forth. Um, so th this is an official pricing. But the, I I wanted to, to bring this up because even if they are similar in price, these are two very, very different vehicles aimed at very different buyers, right? I mean, yeah. I, f I feel that way. I feel that way big time. Sorry, sorry. I'm putting a message into our chat. I, I just want to know <laughs> what people... <laughs> You know, assuming you would actually you could actually afford it and buy it or, you know, whatever. Would you take the GX or the TX? Well, I'm, I'm taking the GX, man. I'm taking the GX because <laughs> I, I, I I love the chunky way it looks. I love the extra off road capability. Um, if I wanted a more of a street SUV, I, I mean, I no, I, I just take the GX. Um, I'm not sure how to say this user's name, Naveen the Machine, I think. Uh, the TX is such a letdown, no luxury features and ugly styling and likely mediocre performance. I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, MDX, Aviator, XC90, Palisade, Telluride are already way better options by the time this hits dealers. I mean, I mean, the, the, that, that could be a pretty stout argument. Um, I believe this is... This is supposed to replace like the RXL, if I remember correctly, right. which was always um, kind of compromised because which, it wasn't. Yeah. They kind of just they really just kind of crammed that third row of seats in here. Rather, this mm -hmm. was clearly designed from the ground up to be right. a three row. So, right. Um, um, but I mean, with with similarities similarities to the Grand Highlander, obviously. Right. Do you take this or the Grand Highlander? Is is you know that 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 might be a better question. So for me, like, I don't really like either one of them. If I'm being totally <laughs> honest, you're just gonna go the GX like me, right? Well, no, but I would. I I, I neither one of those vehicles do much for me. Neither, both the TX or the Grand Highlander, but they're, you know, they're three row SUVs to you know carry your family around, and that is a perfectly fine segment but it, neither one of them do, does anything to really excite me yeah it, it's not really standing out i guess is is a might be might be a good take on it um yeah i mean i'm going gx also group fbc gx every day including sunday uh ted adam green gx, GX. tx not great looking at all to me everybody out there listening if you're with us live Pop in onto the chat, Motor1.com on Facebook, Motor1.com Twitter, Motor1 on YouTube. And if you're catching us after the fact and you still want to voice your opinion, you can go ahead and comment wherever you see us at. Or if you're listening on Spotify, Apple, Deezer, Amazon, all the various platforms that we're on, 
podcast at motor one.com. The email is open. And this is a, actually, I, I like this idea. Lexus GX, Lexus TX, Toyota Grand Highlander, or do you wait for the new Land Cruiser coming to the United States? Or Ooh, do you just man. get yourself a, a big old Bronco Raptor? I mean, uh, I mean, if we're if we're looking all around, say say right around sixty sixty five thousand. Land Cru- or the new Land Cruiser has you know backup uh, quarterback syndrome where we know nothing about it, so it's kind of the most interesting one, you know. So let me, I would tentatively say Land Cruiser, but let me wait and see it. But I'm definitely after seeing the GX and what we're doing, they're doing it with there, and we're being pretty pretty sure that this is going to be the toyota version of that the fact that you could get a lot of those features for less money is a really compelling option in my opinion yeah very true very true speak up ramblers we want to hear here for the rest the of ramblers the are having a live. conversation about the lexus lc right now <laughs> they've, they, they've changed topics it's <laughs> well I, I mean hey lc lx tx GX RXL, which is gone. Uh, this this is what makes the marketing side of my brain just just scream in pain. I don't get the continued fascination with just these very generic brandings. GX TX LX LC. It's so difficult to keep straight unless you unless you are well unless you're us journalists like us and hey if you listen to the podcast you know i can't keep my crap straight like a lot of the times uh toyota btz 43 x 138 um what was the thing the a couple weeks ago that i that i was forcing myself to keep straight and i couldn't keep straight uh oh I like can't remember. like GMC Sierra AT oh, ATX AT four yeah. God damn it. Yeah. just just call it El Dorado. We need to bring back cool names. El Dorado Escalade uh, Group of FBC's got you. Yeah. Uh, GMC AEV AEV AT four X. Yeah, is is that a vehicle or is that like like <laughs> like high school typing class? Yeah, really. The quick brown dog jumps over the GMC ATC 3V4XBZ. Before we move on to our next topic. Yeah, before we move on to our next topic, I want to... So Naveen the Machine expressed a a negative feeling about the TX. Uh, My life is a... My my life is legendary, my life. Sorry. That's uh, an awesome username. Can I take that? Because my name... I mean, my real life name is Chris Smith. It doesn't get any boring, any more boring than that. My life uh, is legendary life. I love it. But he says Lexus TX and GX are home runs in their own, uh, in their different segments. GX is an excellent G class and Defender rival. Uh, TX is better than Aviator, Ooh. MDX, GV80, or XC90. I would say until we drive them, I wouldn't say either one of them is better. But I do agree that it, it's really interesting to see Lexus is feeling really fresh right now um, mm-hmm. in terms of its offerings. And and G class is something I hadn't considered. Do we think? I mean, might the G class still be a kind of kind of a, a, a little bit a, a rung or two higher? Or, or I mean, would would yes, people probably because it has would, would even people more? Cro- you know, I mean, I mean, would people cross shop those? I mean, oh, styling wise, I mean, we're talking about two boxy SUVs, the GX. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, um, you're getting you're getting a third row with the GX. Yeah, I I don't think people would cross shop them. Maybe I'm wrong, but I and I and if don't and if Lexus so. if Lexus were to come out with say a GX F Sport performance, give it give it 500 horse. Uh, well, I don't I don't know. Hard hard to say. The future I, I, is I, wide open, folks. Group of FBC is, agrees with me. G Class lives in its own world in the market and to consumers. I agree with that. It just has yeah. its own cachet of being you know the G Class, but. Let's move on to from a from talking about big boxy SUVs to a very very tiny V8. <laughs> I think um, just just a just a heads up to everybody that's listening. 
Uh, if you have any friends that are into cars, you might want to ping them now because I have a feeling the rest of this podcast is going to get even better. Because last week, um, and I'm just going to say it up front, I'm a modeler. I have scale model cars of all different shapes and sizes. I've done radio controlled cars. I've done slot cars. So as I'm browsing around on YouTube, I see a lot of, of scale model videos pop up. I swear I thought it was muted. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, no, let, let's, let's listen to that. So this video popped up and I was like, we got to write about this. It's a quarter scale, fully functional, um, double overhead cam V8 engine. And I mean, it, I'm sure if, if you're listening, you've probably seen videos from time to time of people that have built small engines. I click on every single one. I watch them. The engineering that goes into these things is, is just awesome. I mean, this thing, we're looking at the video right now. Um, it has a little tiny distributor cap, a, mm -hmm. a little tiny distributor that spins around in there, taking it apart right now because I think because I think there, there were some issues with the timing. Um, but this is a quarter scale V8 engine. And we, I think I, if I remember correctly, we actually wrote about it before. But the he, person not this specific one, but not, this not, guy, not that specific he, one, he does this a lot. I have some of his other uh, videos mm -hmm. pulled up uh, that we've written about. But um, I want to point out real quick. This is so he is building this from a kit, but mm -hmm. you can tell as he's building it, it is not a kit in the sense that they give you absolutely everything and you put it together and you have an engine and you're done. There is a lot of hand work being done uh to make this happen and so i if there is if for some reason you want to build this thing too if you have a what a project uh it's from the company enjo more i guess is how you say it uh it's 78 cc's is the total displacement like smith said it's a v8 it works well I, we'll go back to the video and you can see it working the price of the kit is two thousand eight hundred ninety nine dollars yeah, and 99 cents however I mean, it's, there is apparently a 400 dollars coupon right now so i mean it, it's not it's not <laughs> it's not like the uh, the rotary wankel engine that you saw as a kid at the store at the hobby store that you could put together with some plastic glue um no. but it's just it's just so freaking cool oh and, absolutely and when you hear it run and and that's one of the reasons why I was, when i saw the video it's like we got to write about this because this particular person put modified exhaust basically put a set of headers right. on this thing <laughs> and there's a comparison of how it sounded before versus how it sounds afterwards. Um, and, and there were some teething issues in there as well. Um, a belt broke, so he realized that the, the oil pump wasn't working for a few minutes. Right, that's what I meant for, by... Fortunate, fortunately, it, it didn't harm anything. But when you hear this thing start up, where there's modified exhaust, it's like, it's like a quarter-scale V8 engine that functions isn't cool enough. I got to put headers on it. I don't know, it I don't know like if there's 9, a better definition... RPM. I don't know if there's a better definition of being a car enthusiast than having a quarter scale V8 engine that's just mounted on a block that you right. still want to modify. I mean, I don't know if it gets any better than that. Uh, Bruce, do, do you think we can, uh, you have it loaded up here. Yeah. Do you know roughly where um, the sound comes in at? I think it was a little bit later in the video. Yeah. it's. A I, would, I would, I would, I would love to let people listen yeah, to this because they do. They, they do a before uh, and after. And there, there were some timing issues when they were running it before. So it was struggling to run. Um, it was struggling to build revs. They got that taken care of. They put this yeah. modified exhaust on. Yeah, I will do that. I just wanted I wanted people to see this be, to understand that, yes, this is a kit, but you can see the amount of work this guy is doing. You know, he he built a kit, but there is a lot of hand work being done to put this thing together. It's not like, you know. He just read the instructions and did some stuff. This, this which this I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you could, but conceivably, I mean, he, yeah. He, I mean, he he's making it better, and I mean, that's just, I that's that's everything that's great about being a car enthusiast, taking a scale model engine and being like, no, I can mod this. It's like so I'm not going to put it in here. Here's where he's putting his custom exhaust on. You can see, <laughs> and, look, and, look, and look at the pipes. I mean, look at those. I mean, th those headers look amazing. But quarter scale headers, they look amazing. And they've he's got then the little mufflers put on there. And I think he even runs it with the mufflers removed for a little bit. 
but here here's the startup. Let's up. let's, let's right. give it some sound. <laughs> It just sounds so good. But you can see, you know, cool and, and like it's a real engine. It, it's a real it's engine. It's a quarter scale engine. Conceivably, you could put, you know, you'd need to build a transmission or something, but you could power something with this. <laughs> That, this is before. This is before the modifications. Before. And now comes after. It's a 78cc quarter scale V8 engine. Listen to it. Here it is with no mufflers. <laughs> I think this is when the belt comes off. Oh yeah. The, the yeah, belt. I think this is when the belt breaks. Oh, but, I don't know if I can take any more. I need to take a drink after that. <laughs> I, I mean, quarter scale V8 engine. We've got the article up at motorone.com mm-hmm. uh, where we have the video embedded. We also have a link to the article in the description in the video description for this very podcast. And I, that's just. It's just a fantastic little piece of engineering. I've seen smaller functional engines. Those are just, those are every bit as amazing, if not more so. Um, just the, um, and I'll the, share the, here. The time that of, goes into that. Oh. Uh, I'll share here. And, you know, I, I'll name the guy's channel in a second because it's Johnny Q something. I'll name it. But yeah, uh, we also, this is a previous, uh, th- we did this in 2022. But he also built a tiny four cylinder that you can see is mm-hmm. almost palm sized. Like, <laughs> it's how incredibly tiny it is. Seventeen point five cc's. What? I mean, I mean that's something you could put into a fairly large radio controlled car. And I've seen people do that. I've seen people yeah. do those sorts of things too. And let me call it call him out. Uh, Johnny Q ninety is the name of yep. the YouTube channel. Johnny Q ninety YouTube. Um, yep. We wanted to talk about this one just because. Come on. It's 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 ridiculously amazingly awesome, um, but it was also one. It was also a, a really good article for us last week, traffic wise, which tells us okay, this these are the types of things that uh, that people want to see that our audience wants to see. We are working very hard to try to bring more of that into the podcast. Mm-hmm. And gosh, twist my arm to talk about scale model anything. Ow 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 ow. I, I'll just I'll just do it constantly. Do, do you have this? Here is, uh, oh, go ahead. I, 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 I'm just saying, Bruce has pulled up an article that we wrote on a small rotary engine. This is the same builder. This is also That's Johnny. The same builder. Yeah, I remember. So. I remember hearing this one too. I can't remember exactly where it comes in where we hear the sound. Do, well, do you want to vamp do, a do second? You, maybe I can figure it out. Do, do you want to try to give it a clip? Because that thing was yeah. just that was also just re, it just sounded ridiculous how good it was a little tiny scale of rotary engine. And I know you're thinking, oh, it's just a little rotary engine. So that's like, you know, every, every Mazda I mean, RX-7 that was ever built. Camshaft by, well, it's not the camshaft I know on a rotary, but he's turning the pieces by hand. Like, <laughs> it's just so wild. Yeah, just, 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 a, just a little work. tiny wankel style. Just, just doing all of the stuff with like Dremel drills. I mean, there, I mean, there are regular lathes and things, but um, the, the, uh, Okay, the startup will be right around. Yeah, let's let, let's give it a listen here. Here we go. He uses a drill. <laughs> uh, listen, to- listen to that little tiny rotary. I love that he says engine leaks from the exhaust. So it's really a rotary. Like a two-stroke jerk bike, but I mean, it's that's a distinct rotary sound. Oh yeah, even in small scale. Um, 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 um. 
<laughs> so, yeah. That's uh, that is so good. Bruce, I totally forgot about that one cuz I was looking up some other uh some other engines as well. Thank you for catching that one. So, yeah. Small uh, scale engines. I think this warrants just a larger discussion and appreciation of anything scale replica in the automotive world. Why? Because we just spent the first half of the podcast talking about vehicles that start at 60 grand. Probably. We don't know for sure. But that's still fairly unattainable for a lot of people. You know what is attainable? You and I. (laughs) You know what is attainable for everybody? Look at this. That right there is a 125th die cast replica of a Chrysler Concorde. Look at this thing. What every little boy wants. What what every person wants, just a generic Chrysler Concorde with the 3.5 liter V6 up front. It's front wheel drive, but it's not a transverse mount. It's a longitudinal mount engine. I don't know if a, a lot of people, I don't think, realize uh, that, that's a north-south engine in this little front-wheel drive Concorde. Um, but yeah, let, let's introduce the segment though, real yes. quick. Well, you're showing off cars. Based on how well that uh, that small engine video did, you and I were talking, and we kind of wanted to talk about scale models in general a little yes. bit because it's something you and I both really like a lot. We um, we love it. Unfortunately, right now where I currently am, I have very, very few scale models with me, but I have a few I want to show off. But in a grander argument, I thought we could talk, use this to talk about, you know, a little bit of like where models at in general are right now. And specifically, um, I wanted to share, you know, the the major, there are a bunch of major model makers. Many of them are in Japan. There are Mm -hmm. some that are starting to come out of China right now. Um, that are doing really high quality work. And then there's mm-hmm. obviously Ravel and Italieri and stuff like that in Europe. Um, right. I and think and AMG to, went out of business, right? Um, I don't know if they did or not. And and to clarify to everybody listening, Bruce and I right now we're talking about plastic scale models that you can build. Right. But but it's uh, not it's it's not limited to that by any means. No, 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 no. Um, we are definitely gonna be talking about other stuff, but I just wanted to show people, this yeah. off because I think it's really cool, and that is so there is a company called Fujimi out of Japan. I yes, I, I, I have name. actually have some of their kits. And they are now starting to re-release some of the coolest models that they ever made. And they're actually improving them as well. And uh, it's part of their Toge series, which um, were uh, like Japanese, you know, downhill racer type, initial D type stuff. Yep. Um, but so this, these are new kits. Uh, this one actually isn't even on sale yet. It goes on sale in, uh, that July. Um, and so it has a whole new base plate. Um, you can, you know, you can model it and have the wheels like cambered out and stuff like that if you want. And it's just really cool that they're releasing these because they are long, long out of production. Yes. And they did some really cool. First off, the box art is amazing. But secondly, they did some really cool kits back in the day. And if they're making one new one, it at least makes me wonder if there are more coming. So I'm just going to show you some box art of, you know, some of the cars that they did. And they just did Mm -hmm. just fantastic box art. And it makes me excited that new ones are coming uh, that are not only just repackaged old models, which you see sometimes, but, you know, they're actually doing the work to make them. Uh, up to modern standards so well in this in this case behind me in this display case behind me i think i have two of the of, of the fujimi fujimi cars uh porsche 911s uh 911 t- turbo 911 carrera 1985 spec i got those when i was a kid well not a, a, a late a late teenager mm-hmm. um but that was still a long time ago we'll just leave it mm-hmm. at that and the detail on those kits, 125th scale, um, I, I distinctly remember still to this day, assembling the, putting the wheel assemblies together. This is a 125th scale. The hub assemblies had five lug studs on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and instead of, I mean, a lot of, a lot of the small scale cars, uh, I mean, you'll just, you'll just glue like a, a round disc brake onto the, mm-hmm. onto the chrome wheel. And that's pretty much it. This had five little lug studs that you would 
set the wheel onto it. The detail was just phenomenal. Um, and yeah, I still have, I have two of those in the display case behind me. I have a third um, that's partially built. That's still in a box. Um, I ended up robbing it for parts. So I think what I'm going to do, um, it has a complete engine, uh, a, a complete boxer uh, Porsche engine in it. I think I'm just going to build the engine because the, those kits actually came. If you wanted to display the engine separately, it actually came with a little small engine stand with a decal talking about all the specs for the engine. I remember that. So, so I, I just, I just might, uh, uh, I just might do that up like that. Sorry. And, I'm responding to, uh, Michael Bagley asked for the link to uh, Fujimi's site, so I am posting that in. Uh, yes, we'll put the we'll put the link right here, now. and everybody out there listening, uh, we'll uh, we'll make sure to go back to our article post on MotorOne.com. Um, we put a we put a post up every week uh, announcing the podcast. We'll make sure we put some post up uh, some links up in that post and onto the YouTube uh, video description. Just but to like kinda, you said, kind of help you out here a little bit. Yeah, and like you said, we do not just want to talk about plastic models. Plastic models are cool, but there are all sorts of other scale models. I like I said, I do not have well, many well, cars. Well, with while me right while now. while Bruce is doing that, I mean, I just have a fascination for like the. I hate to say more generic kits, but it's like everybody wants to build a '57 Chevy or a '69 Mustang. Mm -hmm. So when I find something like, um, what is that? A second gen Supra. I, I mean, yes. that's not. A, I mean, that's prior to the A70. This is this is sort of back when it was still the Celica Supra. Found mm -hmm. that in the store. Bought that. Well, how many how many 1994 Chevrolet S10 models do you see? Just just it's just it's just an S10. Um, I happen to find a 125th scale. This this is I can't wait to build this. 1977 oh, Ford Pinto. Gremlin. Oh, no, Pinto. That's a, that, that's, a that's a Ford. That's a Ford Pinto. And this is this is a recent release too. The S10 is an older release. Mm -hmm. um, probe GT. <laughs> That's just a Probe GT, man. It's just yeah, a Probe I, GT. Yeah. Um, this look at this. This is a 120 scale. It's just a Nissan King Cab. Just who makes just, that one? I don't recognize um, that. This is this is an old Limburg kit. Uh, okay. Th that I still have sitting around. So I mean, yeah, just kind of. I mean, everybody can build the, the big muscle cars. Um, I even have a Ford Taurus. I'm shocked. It, it, it's, it's technically a show, but I painted it up like a Taurus GL because who wants to make a model of a Taurus GL? I'm a nerd. I guess I do. But yeah, uh, that's, that, that's, I wanted, I, we didn't want to make this all plastic models. Plastic right, models, right, as right, we right, said, right, are right, very right, cool. Right. But for a dollar, you can find cool stuff too. This is what I couldn't pass up i saw it in the grocery store i had to nice. have it uh 90 audi quattro race car i i i saw it had to have it and now for a dollar i own an audi and how many people out there have some measure of how i, I mean i have some sitting behind me um i'm hoping to work <laughs> if i get time to do it uh i'm gonna run a little series on motor one um, as I go through some of the toys I had as a kid to see, okay, am I keeping this stuff? Am I getting rid of them? So, I mean, I've, I found quite a bit of stuff from the eighties matchbox, super spin car wash is among them um, with a little matchbox cars. Um, I got these and now we're talking like some older kind of collector stuff. Um, anybody remember stompers? No, anybody no, ever no. heard of stompers? They were, they were big through the eighties. At least in the United States, they were. They were just these little trucks. These little uh, trucks. Maybe I do remember those. these little Never trucks mind. on big tires. Um, and by the way, that's just that's just a little first gen Ranger. How cool is that? A little first gen Ranger. You're showing um, that, and it makes me think: Why are micro machines not a thing anymore? Why did we lose I, micro machines? I don't. I don't know. But I mean, I mean, look at this little AMC Eagle. That's cool. AMC Eagle. And it's battery powered with a little motor inside. So you, you push the button and the lights come on and it's got wheels and it's got two speeds. Can you steer it? No. No. Is you it remote controlled? No. no. You turn it on and you just set it on the ground and you go with it. Um, but they, well, also, they also made some play sets. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to try to bring some of these, like some of these 80s 
90s mm-hmm. car toys back uh, and just to well, not bring it back into stores, but just kind of bring right. them back because I totally forgot about these things. I totally forgot about them until I found them in a box and it's like, God, no wonder I do what I do for a living. I, 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 I was so ingrained in all of these, all of these things. And how many people out there got into cars because of Hot Wheels? Right. Because of plastic models or die cast models or micro machines. It's, it's something that I think a lot of people just don't really spend that much time thinking about. Um, sure. And, and yeah. maybe it's taken for granted and maybe well, we shouldn't take it for grant, granted quite as much. Streck here, he has had two RC car related things and RC cars are something that I never got into, but I know you did. Yep. So can you educate me? Tell me why all RC cars are cool. I know what they're cool, but you know, for the folks out there, well, I mean, I mean, some RC car love. I, I mean, I mean, my thing was, okay, you know, I love cars and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I just love pretty much all measure of cars. Um, and my first RC car that I got was, ah, uh, it was an, it was an old Tamiya, uh, one tenth scale, like, like a road car. If I, oh, oh wait, no, it wasn't. It, it was, well, it was the, it was the Tamiya. TL01 chassis, which was an on-road, all-wheel drive, electric uh, RC car chassis. And uh, the body, it, it was Ford's SVT Lightning back in the late 90s. They came oh. out with the SVT Lightning. It's like, I mean, I was, I was doing stuff with shows and, and SVT vehicles at the time. And it's like, okay, I've got to get that. And I mean, if, if you like putting things together, if you kind of have that analytical mind, this was a kit. I know now you can just buy them ready to run, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I really enjoyed the kit factor because you could buy them. You assembled them. If you wanted, you could buy hop-ups, um, mm-hmm. modifications, basically. You, you could buy hop-ups. You, you could upgrade the bearings. You could upgrade the suspension. You could upgrade the tires. You could upgrade the motors, the speed controls. You could kind of, You could kind of make it your own. Um, and in some respects, it's it's a model kit like that that you could build, but then, but then it did, but but then it didn't stop. You didn't right. just set it on your shelf. You could go out and drive it and have fun with it. So uh, that was kind of my first taste, and I ended up having. I think I got a couple more of of the of the Tamiya TL01 cars. I mean, because they were they were fairly simple. They weren't too expensive. They mm-hmm. could they could take a lot of abuse. Um. I've had a couple nitro cars over the years. Nitro oh. cars are just so much fun because it's a little gas powered remote control car. There's nothing that's not fun about that until you can't get it to run. And they can <laughs> they can be kind of maintenance intensive um, and the cost can spiral up. I mean, I never got into like the, like some of the big tracks stuff, you know, some of the big monster trucks, but I had, I had a couple of the two wheel drive stadium trucks. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. The Did last one I got a Traxxas for us, or am I crazy? No, no? We, okay. we were we were we were talking about it. So we were trying okay. to work out a deal with Traxxas, but uh, the never um, happened. Okay, yeah, that, that that was that was some of the some of the rock crawling stuff mm-hmm. uh, yeah. that I was that I was going to try to check out, but we never uh, got that to go through. Uh, Bruce, do, do you remember when you and I were talking about doing um, model kit reviews? Well, we were or, do or, or a at least model a couple kit like uh, like how to build a car model and like go through all the steps and for motor all one the pictures. We were pretty much ready to go. And then it just it, never. It, yeah, it, it just never it just never came about. Well, you you bought because we bought Ferraris, right? Yeah, I, I love sitting here talking with you. Yeah. Remember when we bought Ferraris? Yeah. We don't have to tell anybody they were 125th scale. Yeah, but I, think uh, I, did but, I mean, Enzo, yeah, that's so if I'm not mistaken, you, you had the Enzo because I got the LaFerrari. OK, I'm pretty and, sure uh, I, did I, the I mean, Enzo. I mean, just just a fantastic little kit. I know we're talking about plastic cars again, uh, but I'm curious if people are are interested in, in these things anymore, uh, because, I mean, once upon a time, you could go to pretty much any store and buy those. And now it's relegated, I think, generally to hobby stores. And to, the and, the and, only... and, and to enthusiasts that, that really enjoy just sitting down for a little peace and quiet uh, and, and trying to put something together. Right. It, it, I will say that's one of the great things is that it is very relaxing oh, um, to, you know, sit there and build a model. That's 
it, it's one of the things that it's a great wintertime hobby, if I'm being honest, because, you know, you can't necessarily go out and do anything. That's why I've kind of stalled on the kit that I'm building right now is because I keep wanting to, you know, go ride my bike or take the dog out or something like that. But I know once winter comes around, I'm going to be, you know, building like a madman. Right. No, it's it's definitely something where if <laughs> If you really enjoy being outside, uh, yeah, wait till it's not quite as good uh, to be outside. Yeah. Uh, one thing also that I wanted to mention to you, since we're talking about scale cars, we're talking about RC cars. Um, slot cars were huge. I should have thought about that back in the in the fifties and the sixties into the seventies. Um, my fun, but, we have a slot car track nearly the length of the basement at my parents' house. Awesome. I, I grew up with that. My father had a track that he built in, in the basement of our house. Yeah. And it was and it was large enough to take one thirty second scale and one twenty fifth scale slot cars. Um, And I mean, I mean, that was, I think, probably the, the I guess you'd say that maybe the glory days uh, when when those things were everywhere. Now, I, I mean, it's 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 a much smaller kind of niche thing, uh, but it still exists and we wrote an article and give me just a moment to pull this up here um if you saw it on motor one you may have seen a piece about uh, a ford gt40 that looked like okay uh, somebody's got a, a neat little replica of a ford gt40 well almost full size replica but then the body lifts up and it's a slot car track inside oh right 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 and, and it's like it's like it, it's kind of model after Le Mans a little bit and it's it, and it's it's large enough to take one 30 second scale slot cars. And the detail is just insane. And that was built. That was custom built for just one person. It went to an auction and I forget it, it brought like a hundred grand or it, the, the price that it brought was insane. So the company that builds those that built that is called slot mods. And they recently announced that, Hey, you know what? There was such a good response to that. We'll build five more. And they're getting $150,000 a piece. Wow. And I bet, I bet they'll sell every one because, oh, sure. and, and, and the, the, the pictures we're looking at here. Oh, that, that's what it was. It was a Porsche 917 that went to auction. Now they're building a GT 40 based uh, slot car track. So the pictures that we're looking at here are of the 917. Let me get down here to the gallery. But I mean, they're going to do something similar with a Ford GT40, and I think it's just it's just fantastic because when you're not when you're not using it as a track, it's just a cool looking replica of a race car, right? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it, we went from a one dollar matchbox to a hundred and fifty thousand dollar slot car track, but uh, I mean, when you open up the body and you have this inside. Oh, I think that's just I think that's just just fantastic. So I'm I'm looking at their website and they cut they've done some similar things like that. I'll, I yep. want to show this. Off. They, they've, do, they've done a lot of custom slot car builds. And mind you, something like this isn't easy there to do. Go. You're not going out and you, you're not buying track. You're not assembling this. You're not putting it together. You are custom creating this from scratch. Um, and, and growing up with a large slot car track that had to be repaired, I can personally attest it's not easy to do this stuff and to have it work right. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, the detail that's put into this is just, just amazing. It looks phenomenal. Yeah. It's, it, they're going to cost $150,000 a piece. But when I look at this, I, I mean, how, how can you not smile? How can you not just oh, right. be you know 12 years old again i don't know that, that, that's that's my little take on slot cars no um, it's very of course good. of course I mean, I mean there are sets that you can buy i mean you can still go out and right. buy the like like the little um uh, it's not I, I don't think maybe it is ho an ho gauge slot right car those set. are the smaller ones yeah yeah yep yeah, ho um of course i mean there, there are other slot car tracks that you know kits that you can go out there and buy that don't cost one hundred fifty thousand dollars. but i mean that's just yeah. That's just another aspect. One other thing that I wanted to talk about here. Um, we've started to to cover. There's a YouTube channel here. Um, and in fact, if you can vamp for me just a second, Bruce, 
Let Absolutely. me get so things, I, I do want to share going here. A, 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 you can have ma- just like we were talking about, you can have massive slot car tracks or you can have this. And I had this as a kid. This was called. Oh, wait. Uh, I closed the image. Hold on. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> there it is. Uh, this was called race in a case. And it was micro machines, slot cars. And it came in a case that you would just like fold up. You know, they show like some kid taking it places, but uh, it was neat. It was like you were the James Bond of slot cars. Like you had the, this, <laughs> it looked like a briefcase and then you would just set it out. I remember those slot car track. I, I remember those. I thought those were, were really cool. I didn't have anything quite that portable. Um, I also grew up on 10 acres with my own baseball field. So I t- the people generally came to my house. I was like, oh, let's just, let's, let's just go out. We'll, we'll play in the sandbox or something, which is where I got great use out of my super spin car wash. Cause don't you think everything was dirty as hell by the time we were done? Um, we've been covering some videos from this YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is called miniature automobiles and All right. yes, they're doing everything in scale. And this particularly one I'm, I'm going to focus on here. One eighteenth scale detail shop diorama makes tiny VW and Range Rover look like new. I'm, I'm going to play this just for a second. I, I mean, let's just start right out here and take a look. This looks like a real, the, the inside of a real detail shop. He's got little golf boxes, got little like, 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 like wraps and things. The only thing then that you see is like, oh, that's his hand. That's just a tiny little detail shop. And we have the, just, I mean, he gets, he gets these little 118 scale die cast cars, creates these incredible dioramas. I mean, this, the, the, the detail and the work here is amazing. And this is just another aspect of the scale model world that we do. We need to see more of. I mean, you've got this little, I say little, I mean, 118 scale isn't necessarily small. But it's not. <laughs> but I mean, it's, one, it's, one eighteenth is kind of a really nice sweet spot because it's small enough that you can yep. still, you know, put them in a box or move them around and stuff like that. But and and obviously we're talking about detail. Yeah. And obviously we're talking about somebody that's also extremely skilled behind a camera Clearly, to get the yes. proportions right, to, to get the uh, to get the backgrounds right. Um, but we've done and a I few of these zoom a skilled builder as well, because it's not like they sell just a lot of these things. You would have to make like the little table that he's got there. Cause. Oh yeah. I, I mean, finding that or like the boxes, like, yeah, I mean, there's the little boxes sitting over in the corner and the ground. I mean, you just, like you have the bare concrete versus and on the other side of the quote unquote glass, you have like the, the detail bay or, or the, 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 you know, where they do their wraps and their paint work inside the paint booth. That's what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. I, you have different flooring over there. Um, you have the pillars that have grime on them. Right. And anybody that's been in or worked in a detail shop, no matter how clean you keep the place, you know, you're going to have stuff like this. Just, just phenomenal, just phenomenal work. Totally. Phenomenal work. What else we what else we got here, Bruce? Do you got any other I, little scale stuff to talk about? I don't. Unfor- like I said, unfortunately, I don't have that much around at the moment. I will. Uh, no, I'm not even going to do that. Um, yeah, not much going on, unfortunately, for me with scale models. But, I, you know, I expressed everything I like. I love, you know, Hot Wheels. I love building models. I should probably get into RC cars at some point. It's kind of a blind spot for me. Um but yeah, it, you know, it, still, regardless, whatever it is, it's fun. Well, <laughs> I would love, <laughs> I, I, would, I, I would love to hear more from the Ramblers out there on, on your experiences with s- the the scale automotive world, because I feel like this is something that every, and I'm gonna say, it, you, you say every, you, you commit like that, yeah, I'm committing like that. This is something I think every automotive person out there if you're a super enthusiast if you're a modest enthusiast if you're just a, an occasional enthusiast i think this is something that every single person can connect with can relate to and has fond memories of on some level whether it's hot wheels whether it's rc cars whether it's old 80 stompers whether it's micro machines whether it's building 
plastic model kits, whether it's building from scratch models, the semi truck that you probably can't really see too well in the case behind me. Let me move my camera up. There's there's the semi truck right in the very top of my case. My father hand built that. And the only thing that he used from a plastic kit was the semi truck. And that is a period correct 10 car car hauler like he used to drive. And I've never seen one in the world that's that accurate. And of course, I built a bunch of Mustangs to put onto it because I'm a nerd. But it's I feel like it's something that every single person can relate to. And you know what? In, in today's world where there's a lot of just a, a lot of concern, I'll just I'll just leave it that way. Maybe we can all just come together and just race some damn cars. Just 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 we'll set up a Hot Wheels track. We'll all get together. We'll do some we'll do some some crazy fun drag racing with Hot Wheels cars. We'll pull up some RC cars. We'll go through some some local parking lots. We'll have some fun there with RC cars. Then maybe we can sit down. We can put together some snap tight model kits before we head out to do some more. Well, hey, one thing we didn't talk about, um, we've covered quite a few videos of master woodworkers making oh, yeah. legit automotive art just out of blocks of wood. Maybe we could all learn how to do that. Make this world a better place. One scale model car at a time. Real quick, just so I, we can show this off. Here is what Smith's talking about in regards to woodworkers building model cars. And this is, a, again, a level of skill I have. Oh. I cannot <laughs> even fathom because. That's a 2023 it, GMC Sierra wood model. The doors open. I mean, just the time spent on that big old GMC grill alone. These videos are generally eight to 10 minutes long and he makes it look so easy. And it's like, it is absolutely not easy. And right. I mean, <laughs> like the, you can see block of wood and then eventually you're going to get a, a pickup block truck. of wood and a photo. And yeah. I mean, using basic bench tools, a lot of the work here is done by hand. You get out a chisel and you're chiseling the little details out. Um, I love how, Generally, the the size, I mean, you would think, okay, you start with a big block of wood and then you just hollow it out and all that. No, I mean, they actually make like the center section and then they have sides that they put on. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's it's just just fascinating. Fascinating. Yep. We could we could solve all the world's problems if we all <laughs> sat down and played with some damn cars. I, I, that I think is absolutely true. Um, but I think that's going to be our show for tonight. Um we are uh, we have super, super tentatively have some guests coming up. It won't be next week, but uh, in the future to talk about some cool stuff. Yes, um, definitely want to stay tuned for that. We have some stuff in the works. Um, but yeah, and, other than, and, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, once again, email us podcast at roto1.com. Tell us about your, your, your scale car experience. Yeah, we all, we all have them. We would, we would love to share it. We would love to talk about it a little bit more. Let's have some fun. Totally. So, uh, as always, good afternoon, good evening, good night, or good morning to any of these days, depending on where you're listening from. Uh, we appreciate all of our listeners. Like I say, there is any number of things that you could be doing, perhaps even building a small You could be building a wood. model right now. Or a model, yeah. Um, Maybe you're you inspired. To spend yeah, you decided to spend time with us, so we really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, we will be back same time next week, talking about all the cool car stuff that's going on. So bye-bye everybody. We'll see you later.